What is going on, everybody? I have a great interview and video in store, or if you're listening on the podcast, the Primitive Home Fitness Podcast, I can link that down below in the description box if you guys are curious, want to listen to it there. We are interviewing Chris Hughes, who is the president of Bullworker. We're going to talk all things Bullworker from a line of their products, from the classic Bullworker to the ISO Bow, the ISO Flow. I kind of push back and talk about how I personally been using it, some general apprehensions I had about the product. We talk generally about isometrics. We certainly get into the history of the brand. And then we even kind of compare various isometric or similar related products and what makes Bullworker stand out as a brand and company. I interviewed him a few weeks ago. This is before I got a chance to really play around with their ISO Bow and ISO Flow. So we do get into those products, but I'll give you guys some updated thoughts on that. If you guys want to check out that review, I'll link it here on the screen. I certainly did review and discuss the Bullworker Classic, so we get into that. I can also link that past review. I have other updated thoughts. I'm sure I have other updated thoughts uh, that I'll get into in this recording. So what I want to do with this interview is when I introduce each question, I will give you guys some updated thoughts and opinions about what we got into because at the time of that recording, like I said, we didn't really, I didn't really get a chance to mess around with that. I also didn't get a chance to have as much exposure to other isometric related products like the Isoconator also did a review for this, can link it down below. Also do get into things that are similar like the T2, which that I haven't reviewed that, but I will kind of get into that a little bit here as well. Timestamps will be down below if you guys want to jump to a certain section. If you guys want to save money on any Bullworker product, you can use the code SBT10. Uh, if, even if there's some sort of promo sale that's going on, you can always click on the link down below, help support me and the channel. If you use do purchase from that link from their website. With all that being said, guys, please hopefully like, share, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoy this video. So the first thing we'll get into is the history of the Bullworker brand. You'll see his father acquired the rights in the 90s and then essentially he came on a little bit later and started kind of further developing the brand as you see it today. I uh, really pay special close attention to a Chrisman highlights right here in the beginning. He talks about the two different types of people who approach fitness related products and fitness, really in kind of two distinct camps. And I find that to be definitely the case. You can be kind of hard dogmatic in one area, have no open mind to really try something like this, or you can be something like myself when I promote this channel is just trying and experimenting new things, having fun with things, and just using your own creativity to kind of find your own little method to your world of fitness. So let's jump in and hear what Chrisman has to say about it. The way we see it is there's like two types of people, right? Obviously there's a lot in between black, not everything's black and white, but there's like the people that are really into fitness and they're like, Hey, I'm here. I see this as a game. I'm really open-minded. I'm willing to give things a try and, and really explore. And I get creative and, and figure things out. And then you have people that are very much in the box. They're like, okay, I'm only going to regurgitate what I learned. I'm only going to regurgitate what people say in the, uh, in like, um, forums or podcasts or whatever the hot commodity stuff is. Right. And so I think, uh, I think like, that's like one of the things that it's really fun to get our products in the hands of the people that are like, Hey, I'm willing to get creative and I'm willing, I'm willing to kind of figure some stuff out and take a different approach to fitness. So it's a family company. So you are on right on that. So basically the Bullworker was invented in 1962 after Max Planck kind of came out with some studies demonstrating how effective isometrics are. And so they did, I believe it was over 10 years, a pretty thorough experiments of just testing isometrics versus other forms of strength training. And it was just far and above the fastest way to build strength. And so at the time, a lot of the equipment for isometrics were um, big, like bulky equipment for big research facilities or medical facilities. And so uh, the German inventor, his name's Gert, Gert Kolbel, he invented the Bullworker. And now all of a sudden we have this isometric capability in this very friendly home compact fitness equipment. And so he ended up selling the rights in the late sixties. And then the people who took the rights basically in the seventies and eighties are what made Bullworker kind of what it is today. When, when you look at it from an international presence and everybody kind of has been like, Oh yeah, I remember that. I've seen that, you know, the comic ads, the newspaper ads, so on and so forth. And, so then it changed hands one more time. And then my dad actually got the rights there in the late nineties. And then, so growing up, I was always lifting weights. I was in, I played sports in high school. And then in college we had access to pretty premium gym and everything. So I was always like, yeah, that's cool, dad. Like go get them, you know, and um, kind of like a lot of people, you know, they look at it and they're like, oh, that's cool. But never really even gave it a try. And then after college, I went to go teach. And I was like, you know what? I don't really want to spend the money on a fitness uh, membership anymore. I definitely don't want to spend the time that I was spending in the gym. 
and uh, let's see what you got. So he gave me the power pack, which is kind of our, our whole system. And I was pretty quickly blown away at, I mean, my workout routine was anywhere from like 40 to 60 minutes, which I think is kind of the sweet spot to get the optimum results. I mean, I think if you're training for specific things, you can go longer. And if you're training for, I mean, anything's better than nothing, right? So if you're giving me nothing, give me five minutes and so on and so forth. But uh, I lost a little bit of weight because I was not lifting bulky and, and ha- carrying around all that weight, but I was more flexible. I was more, more definition and and I just felt really good. And so I was like, wow, these things are really incredible. So I used those for a couple of years. And then when I traveled through South America, I brought with me just the ISOBA. And that fits in your pocket. And so it was so easy to con- and convenient to travel around with. And after eight months of traveling around and just using this, I was blown away. I was like, okay, I'm pretty sold. This stuff works. And so I came back. I said, dad, what are you doing with all this stuff? And specifically the ISO bow. And he was like, Oh, you know, I'm focusing on the other products, the bull worker, bow classic and steel bow. And that's when I said, you know, I think we've got some opportunity here. Let's see what we can do. And so before and after work, I was kind of playing around with it and rebranding. And, um, that was about eight years ago. So everything kind of, kind of worked out well. I kind of rebranded it and, and brought it into the modern day. Um, and, and now we've, we've come out with a few other products and, so it, it is a family business. So you guys heard him give the background that the Cobell family originally developed the Bullworker and the Bullworker brand, uh, and they've since gone on to do their own kind of thing, making this ISO Canator device, which I just recently reviewed. And I do really like it in its own right, but it is very similar to their ISO bow. And I won't go into it too much, but I talked more with Chris Mann and then even with the Cobell um, owners as well. They gave me some commentary about how this is superior to this. And of course, there's gonna be some back and forth, but they are very similar products. Uh, one doesn't give you as much feedback. The ISO bow is very simple. So you're gonna hear me kind of introduce and ask some questions about, you know, just given how simplistic this thing really looks, this is the first thing I really saw versus this is much more expensive. This is much more inexpensive. I just wanted to hear Chrisman talk more about this ISO bow because just at first glance, it looks like an extremely simplistic tool that you could just make yourself. So I wanted to hear Chrisman kind of give his thoughts on this thing because he kind of went on to explain that he actually did use this as a standalone product for a period of time. And at first glance, it doesn't really look like much. It's just two kind of canvas straps bound together with some handles. Uh, so you kind of hear him explain the pros and benefits of using the ISO bow. I think, again, curiosity is, is a huge point and, and that'll come up later in the story. But really, I mean, I, I played with it. I knew about it when I was teaching. I was, I was using it with, with the rest of the equipment. But then I went on an eight month trip through South America and I was like, well, I'm certainly not bringing a bunch of gear. Um, and this, I mean, has, it literally fits in your pocket put it in your water bottle holder of your backpack or whatever. So I was like, you know what? I can take that. Let's, let's give that a go. And I've, at this point, I've never solely did the ISO bow for my training. I would always use a hybrid of all of the products. And so then pretty much hit the ground running with, with similar routine focus of like, Hey, I'm going to train four to five days a week and, and train like I normally would. And, and with this, I mean, you can hit, you can hit your shoulders, your your biceps, your chest. I mean, you really can hit any muscle you can think of and you can use it in that traditional way where you think of like, okay, how do I replicate a weightlifting thing? Or you can start to just kind of move around in ways that now you're not confined to gravity, right? Because weights are always coming down. And so now this, you can create the tension at various angles and different directions. So it just gives you a little different feel. And so we were just playing with it. I I was with a buddy down there for a while and we would, we would bust them out. And I remember being on the beach one time in Colombia. And I remember a guy just came up and was like, Hey, what is that? Out of the, that's where the curiosity comes in. And we were working out and he said, can I join? And so we said, absolutely. And I think like most people, you would look at him like, okay, what can I really do with that? And then you try it. And within seconds, you're feeling the pump, like you're feeling the energy, the, the effort put forth. And so same with this guy, he was just shocked at, at how quickly we were sweating and, and in a full pump workout. Certainly. Yeah. Great question. It is patented. So we do have the IP on that, which is great. And it, it is fairly simple. I mean, really, I think what we say a lot of times we have our, some people around the world that, um, whether they're crafty or whether they're, they can't afford it or whatever they might say, we, we keep it at a price point of $20. So we try to keep oh, it very okay. affordable. 
um, which, which our belief in that is a, we want everyone to have access to fitness and, and we think $20 is affordable for almost anyone on the planet. And then B, what it also does is, I mean, you have people that are like, yeah, I'll go make it. And it's like, okay, great. Like you go buy some, maybe some PVC pipe and some nylon webbing, and then you stitch it together and you have an inferior product that still costed you probably close to 10 to $15 worth of material and hours Mm -hmm. of your time. And so that's when it's like, well, do you want the craftiness of make it yourself? Sure. Go ahead. And and we have people that, hey, why can't I just use a rope? Or why don't I just use a towel? And we say, hey, go for it. All of our routines online that are free, we want you to use them. If you're using a towel, a rope, whatever, a homemade one, whatever it might be, go for it. But then I think they start to realize like, oh, the ability for the handles to move, to get different, in, like different grips, the overlaying mold with, with the rubber that makes it just a little more comfortable, a little more durable, a little more kind of quality feel to it and then people kind of usually come around and say yeah it's worth 20 bucks (laughs) now being somewhat new and i'd say a recent convert to the world of isometrics i wanted to hear chrisman really explain how he said that isometrics is proven to be the fastest way to kind of build strength i think for most people looking at isometrics it might seem either somewhat boring uh, might not seem like the most interesting in the world but i can tell you right now i've come to really enjoy it and love it so i wanted to hear chrisman talk about the benefits of isometric training proven to be the fastest way to build strength and so it's one of the claims we, we like to share is that it, it engages more muscle fibers and can build strength up to 66% faster than lifting weights in traditional manner. And so the reason being is because if you imagine yourself, let's use the curl, if you're curling in an isokinetic way or an isotonic way, your muscle is always going to be kind of lengthening and shortening. And so that muscle at that joint angle is never fully being engaged because it gets a break as it changes the angle. And so during an isometric contraction, all of those muscle motor units, not all, but that is the exercise that is going to engage the most muscle motor units during that joint angle. And so it allows your your body to fatigue and to, to stress more than if you were to go through say 10 reps. And so, um, what I would say you can expect with isometrics and, and that's why physical, physical therapists, trainers, a lot of them use it for rehab is because it builds strength so much quicker, but it also doesn't have the movement. So now you have a lot of reduced risk of injury as well. And so what I think F with isometrics is, is the number one thing it's going to do. And, and everyone I, I think who puts it to the test will experience it is strength increase, no doubt about it. So everyone's going to right out of the gates and and experience rapid strength increases. Then you would start to notice like, okay, my muscle definition, is it going to improve? Well, the answer there is most likely, but of course it's, it's a numbers game, right? So if I go and I start exercising, but I'm still having this terrible nutrition plan, the fat's still going to probably cover up how much more defined my muscles are. But if you're saying everything hold equal and I've, never, I'm not going to change my nutrition, but I don't do anything. And now I'm doing isometrics. I would say you can expect to start seeing muscle development, muscle strength increases for sure. And then start to see that definition come in where I do think isometrics probably has a little bit of lacking for a lot of people is muscle mass, right? So when you're talking about like bodybuilder mass gains, and I think that that's where now you have to ask yourself the question of one, we're not going to, we're, we're not going to beat around the bush. I, I, when you're coming to bodybuilding muscle mass gains, nothing replaces free weights. Right. But then at the same time, if you're spending an hour, an hour and a half in the gym, lifting weights, well then let's apples to apples it and spend an hour, an hour and a half doing isometrics. Right. And so the, the issue there is the isometrics because they're so fast and effective, you're usually getting so many results and, and your workout done in such less and much less time. So that's kind of how we say it. there are a lot of people out there um, that are kind of your isometric gurus that have shown that they can put on quite a bit of mass by, by sticking to the discipline and being disciplined, putting in the, the equal effort of what you would in, in the gym. So like when I say standalone, I, I think uh, I'm all in favor of, of mix it up as much as you can. I think for two reasons, I think confusing your body with different approaches is always a good thing. And then two, it's, it's always, in my opinion, nice to switch things up be just for your own creativity and boredom. And so as a standalone product, I'm someone who's used the product for years, nothing else. 
Um, and I'll go out and I'll cycle, I'll rock climb, I'll surf, I'll snowboard and, and do all these other activities and, and be right there with anyone else. Right. And then I'll jump into strength training classes where they are, they are lifting weights. And it's pretty, it's pretty funny how many times people are like pretty shocked, like, wow, like you're here performing just like we all are, who've been doing this every day for years. And so they start to think like, oh, okay, they do like this stuff really does work. And so I think when it comes to a standalone product, the base would be isometrics. If you wanted to just do isometrics, make sure you hit each muscle group. You can use it as a standalone device. Again, what I would expect, strength increases, muscle definition, tone up. But then you start to incorporate, if, if you're specifically speaking to Bullworker as standalone products, we aren't just solely isometric. So now you create the isomotion concept, right? So now you are going through different ranges of motion and you're going through an isotonic rep if you want. And so now you're doing the isometric for the strength gain, but then you're also doing the repetitions for kind of the muscle mass building as well. So short answer, absolutely. I've, I've put it to the test and, and our, our Facebook group has plenty of, of bull worker users that standalone bull worker. And, um, there are quite a few people out there that can, can attest to it that aren't just, uh, inside the company. As far as a standalone, we do say all of our products are standalone. So yes, the Isobo is a standalone product. Um, I have kind of over the years dabbled just because it, I do have curiosity. I want to put my products to the test. So I have dabbled with giving one product to go. I've, I've done the Isobo for extended periods of time solely. I've done the Isoflow solely for extended periods of time and so on and so forth. And so I wouldn't say I have a favorite. Um, I mean, when it comes to pure convenience and everything, and the thing I use every single day, the ISOBO, because really? it's wow. something that's so easy. It goes anywhere. I have, I keep it at my desk. I keep it up uh, in my backpack. And so it's, the, I, it's a great stretching and re uh, relieving tool. So like, even if I'm at my desk, it's good to just kind of really get, get a stretch in. Um, and so that's the product that I use every single day. But if I were to say what I use the most for at the moment, it, it would be a combination between the Steelbow Classic and ISO Flow. That's what I would say I use mostly for my actual training. Um, but to choose a favorite, man, it, it would be tough. I, I think it really comes down to if I'm traveling and I'm, and I'm on the go and I'm like, hey, you know, I don't really want to all of my all of our products fit in the carry on, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. But um, it still takes up half my carry on. So. Um, if I'm like, you know what, this is going to be a short, quick trip and I'm only going to get two or three exercises in, and I just want to keep it quick and fast. Uh, I usually bring my ISO flow because the ISO flow just very small fits in pretty, pretty conveniently. But if I'm like, Hey, you know, I, I really want a full workout and I'm, and I'm focusing more on my upper body. I would say the combination between the ISO flow and the steel bow is a pretty, pretty powerful combination. Um, but it really just, it, it kind of goes to personal preference and size. Uh, taller people might like the classic more and shorter people might like the steel bow more and uh, in between. Now segueing into their Bullworker Classic, I really want to tell him how I was personally starting to use the product. The reason you guys don't see it in the background is I often tend to use this thing more so in my living room doing a variety of different exercises. That's not to say I don't use isometrics with my workouts. I certainly do, but I've been gravitating more towards their ISO flow. Uh, you can say their ISO bow, but even this little ISO canator thing. And for whatever reason, I, this thing just kind of stays in my living room and I do a variety of exercises. It is pretty ingenious, all the different things you can do. As you know, Chrisman, uh, we kind of basically got into, I asked him, is this okay the way I'm doing it? Is there a right or wrong way? And just like how we started this episode, he kind of said that you really, there is no one right, like dogmatic way of using it. Cause even the Bullworker camp, I'm noticing people are saying, well, there's like one way, there's one certain way to get results. And I'm just finding, just like another thing, it's another tool, it's really handy, it's really useful, but I just really like it because of all the different variety of exercises I can do, and just the things of like kind of holding those isometric holds, and it actually just wakes me up kind of from just sitting still in my living room, just messing around with it. So just wanted to hear Chris trying to say on how I was using this product. Great questions, and I'm gonna hit you with the uh, most popular one, it depends. <laughs> so. I think I, I'm like you, I, I actually keep it around and it, play with it throughout and, and kind of, I think that the first and foremost, listen to your body and your, your body will tell you you're overdoing it and how it, how it'll tell you is either you, you maintain soreness to a, to a different degree than normal, or 
you're fatigued, you know, you just feel like, wow, I'm really weak. And I've been weak for the last couple of days. Maybe I need to take a break or something. Um, and, and what we always say is don't confuse resistance with results. Right. And I think it's very hard, especially for the macho men that are like, oh, how much can I lift or whatever the question is. Right. And so it's very common for people when, right, when they get it to throw in the big boy spring and all of a sudden, next thing you know, it, they're like, oh, I can't budget. Some, we even have people who are like, I can't get the spring out. It's like, well, (laughs) that's why we tell you to play with it a little bit. But, and the reason we say that is because the the results don't necessarily come from resistance, right? Resistance is important and resistance plays a role, but more importantly is the, is the form and the time under tension, right? So we say, Hey, get your form, correct. Get your nice, slow, deliberate reps or long holds, focusing on the mind muscle connection, breathing into it. And that's going to actually give you more results than just throwing in a big boy spring and not having those first two accomplished. And so no doubt about it, we, we, we say, as you progress, go with the, the bigger resistance. And so the studies show that between 60 and 80% is kind of your window of optimum results. So we say 70% is, is kind of our recommendation. But again, that is optimum also speaking to the point of injury prevention, right? So if you have someone who's new to fitness or even new to the bull worker, then we highly recommend say, Hey, start with 60% of your effort because it's very difficult to injure yourself at 60% of your effort. But if you get out there and you start going full on 100%, that's when you start fatiguing. That's when you start running into increased chances of injury. And so as you start to progress with your fitness, someone like yourself who has done it for a while in shape, and, and very capable, then, then we would say, absolutely give it days where you're giving it your all, what you put in the black or red spring and you go for it and, and give it a hundred percent exertion. Um, and, and so it really depends on, on the day and, and what your goals are. So if you're trying to train say six days a week, then we would say stick, you can use it every single day, 70% of your effort and keep progressing. But if you're starting to use it every single day and you're really exerting that 80, 90, hundred percent range and you're feeling sore and you're feeling fatigued, then we would, we would recommend, Hey, give it a, give it a day or two break because really where the gains happen is, is in the break and the rest period, right? That's where the recovery happens. And that's where the muscles rebuild and come back stronger. So I think for the average user, we would say stick to 70%, give us four to five days a week would be ideal. I mean, even six, if they, if they will, but again, it kind of goes back to if, if you're giving me zero minutes, five minutes is better than nothing and so on and so forth. So, and so one of the, I, I remember the question you, you, you spoke on previously on how, when, right when you got it, you spent 20 minutes with it, you were kind of like, huh, I want, I was kind of wanting more, or, or this is a little, a little different. And I think that is, is, can be a common experience for people that are, are kind of dabbling a, a lot with other fitness things and, and really, uh, let's say even a weightlifter or something, because it is new, it is different. And there's only so much. So we love putting it in the hands of people like you because creativity is the only limit, right? That's kind of how we think of it. And we usually always have someone come back to us like, Hey, have you thought about this? And we're always like, no, that's a great exercise of, of and way to do it. And so you have your traditional things where it's like, okay, how would I work my chest? Okay. I can compress it or how would I work my back? Or maybe I would give it a back row or an archer. But then you start to have people where they're like, okay, how would I get a little more like thoracic mobility in there? And I remember having a um, physical therapist showing it and he would take, take it, spread it, and then do his kind of lunge and move to the other side. You could start doing like halos, um, a dead bug variation where you, you put it between your leg and your arm, you compress it. And then the other side's doing a dead bug. So there's so many ways that people come up with, with ideas on how to use it. Um, and so if I think that first learning curve, it's real, I mean, right out of the box, it's ready to go, but there's a learning curve to it. You get a little more comfortable with it, a little more attuned with in tune with, with how it works. And, and then we definitely recommend following the routine or maybe checking out at, at your level, maybe going on, I can shoot you a YouTube video of kind of like a total body exercise with it and go through a set or two of that. And I think, I think you'll start to feel like, Oh yeah, I feel that pump 
equivalent to, to when I'm doing another workout in the gym or something. Now, the Bullworker has been around since the 60s with all different types of iterations, and they even changed this thing up a little bit from the chrome kind of style to look more of an aluminum, aluminum grade style. So I wanted to hear Chrisman comment on just the overall durability, how these things are built to last, because these things are more or less just under $200. I wanted to see what the longevity of this particular model is and just the springs in general. We, we have units that have millions of compressions on them and they're still going strong. So really we switched to aluminum because it's lighter and it's more corrosive resistant oh, Okay. because one of the, th and it's actually more durable. It's stronger. One of the things that with the Chrome, it was rare, but we would run into is rust. And it's okay. like, okay, well, wh where'd you keep this thing? And it's like, oh yeah, I brought it to the beach and, you know, and I never wiped it down after or anything. It's like, well, yeah, salt water and all that <laughs> humid air will, will do that. And so, um, as far as, as durability goes, we really don't see issues with it. I mean, there's still some from the sixties that are still going strong. And usually what will happen is like one of the components inside will break, like maybe the spring guide or the spring will finally give out. But then the beauty with, with our current unit is it's all interchangeable springs. So you can just swap in a new spring and be ready to rock. At the time of this recording, I was just coming off messing around with the ISO max and ISO chain devices, which give you guys a lot of feedback and metrics and kind of hard pulls and hard compound movements with isometrics. And so I started doing that with the Bullworker because I liked the fact that I could just grab one simple thing. And so I wanted to see how hard I could actually pull and do things like deadlifts or hard resistance squats on this. So I wanted to ask Chrisman, can this thing handle that type of stress if I'm going kind of max effort or close to max effort on like deadlifts? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. And, okay. and so really what we say is, is that spring is 150 pounds. And so it's the, the units designed for it to be cranked to that 150 pounds. Obviously, can it take more? Yes. What generally what we see have seen very, very, I think I've only seen it happen once is the wire does come out of the clamp. And so, um, something we can look at. It's something that we, we know. Uh, and, and really, I think that is where we would say our biggest challenge or kind of limitation is something that, cause we, we want to continuously improve. So that's something, an area where we see an opportunity to improve is allowing more leg resistance for kind of the stronger people. We would, for the average person, we think we, our resistance is, is, excellent for a lot of people. I mean, you start doing one-legged lunges, one-legged presses at 150 pounds, that's equivalent to a 300 pound lift, right? So it's, it's a decent amount of, of, of effort there. But when it comes to like standing on it and just doing a, a full on deadlift, someone like yourself, I think would put too much, too much torque on the unit where it wouldn't really be able to sustain that kind of torque. Something like the ISO flow, which is, I believe, waiting for you. Um, that is something out that's something similar to like the ISO chain where you would be able to isometrically just crank on it. But in this case, with the ability for it to have that repetition, which is nice com compared to an isometric hold, right? It's different. Um, it, it, that's where we would say, take it to the max and then, and then not much more. Now, a lot of you guys who are already veterans to isometrics know of these products, but the more I've been kind of getting into this world, I realize there's a lot of other brands and upcoming companies that are doing something similar with their ISO flow, which is basically like a strap canvas type of system utilizing things like self-resistance. So I got into more specifically asking about the world fit straps. A lot of you guys like those and use those just a simple canvas strap. I can link it here on the screen and also down below in the description box if you guys are curious. So I just ask him some honest direct questions that me as a consumer have that is basically what makes your product stand out to something that's a little less expensive like that world fit ISO trainer. I kind of knew some of the answers to that, but I didn't get a chance to play around with that. So I ask him that question, but I also get into uh, things like this T2, ISO trainer, I think that's what it's called. Now it's gonna be called ISO Fusion, I believe it's the new name. It has this kind of a bungee type strap system. I got a review coming in the near future about this so I can comment on that, but I wanted to hear what he had to say comparing the ISO flow to something that seems like a very comparable, almost like an, I would say upgrade as far as what they were shooting for uh, with the T2 compared to their ISO flow. ISO trainer, yeah. And really what that is, is, is it's a thicker strap. So it has, a little different 
pressure, if you will, if you're standing on it or something along those lines, but you're right. It, it really is. It's basically the same thing as, as the ISO flow. Uh, they have two clamps, which we only have one, one clamp because you, why would you want to worry with two when you can just pull one and get, get the same result, um, as, as far as length and ours with, so with the, the world fit ISO trainer, it only comes with one strap. So it's strictly isometrics. And what you okay. see is what you get with the ISO flow it comes with two straps and a carabiner. Okay. And so what it does is it gives you all of those isometric capabilities plus more. And then it also allows for self-resistance. And I think once you start playing around with self-resistance with the ISO flow, even if you hook it up as like a suspension trainer, so you have all the body weight, you have all the isometrics, but when you add that ISO or when you add that self-resistance aspect to it, Man, that is like, cause you, your muscles are never getting a break again, back to gravity. If you're doing a curl, your, your arms kind of getting a break when it's down there. But if you're using the ISO flow the entire time you're resisting yourself. And so the whole entire time you're feeling that time under tension. So, uh, I think that's our biggest difference between the ISO trainer. I believe it's the world. Yeah. World fit ISO trainer and the ISO flow is, is the ISO flow will be able to do everything the world fit can do but then it adds a whole different dynamic of capabilities t2 is great products again like it's actually fun we're, we're going to likely look at kind of a new campaign a new message that we're going to send out and, and the message we're going to send because ultimately we believe that healthier fitter people are happier which is just going to make a better world right and so the message we want to start sending out is there are a million things that you can do for your fitness. It doesn't matter whether you choose bull worker, whether you choose body weight, whether you choose the T2, whether you choose weights, whatever it is. The only thing that matters is practicality. What are you going to choose that you're going to sustain? And so that's where we come in is, and we kind of tout our own, like, Hey, we are the most practical equipment on the, on the market. It takes no setup. You pick it up, you use it. It has no footprint or minimal footprint. And, and that's ultimately what's going to produce for you as an individual is the thing that you stick with because weights don't do you any good. If you buy a bunch of weights, you wake, you work out with them for a week and then you're like, yeah, that's too hard. Don't like it. And I don't do it. Right. And so we support almost all products out there. I mean, of course there's your gimmicks, but the T2 great product. Um, it, it, as far as comparing it to the ISO flow, I would, say the only difference is that that bungee aspect to it which is unique and and interesting uh, i'm not sure how much it truly adds to the effectiveness but it's certainly like a marketing seller um and and then the we use a carabiner they use i can't remember what they call it some some fancy word it's the same principle a friction device or something like that um there's there's no real technology to it. It really just goes through a metal loop and then you're creating the own, your tension going through it. Um, so the way we see it is it's really no different than the carabiner. Um, okay. so as far as the ISO flow and the T2 go, I mean, they're, and, and you, I think I've seen that they've recently added a foot strap too, so that they're, that you could, cause a lot of people don't realize cause TRX is kind of the name brand, right? TRX is, is most people are aware of TRX. And a lot of people don't realize that finding an anchor point is a lot more difficult than you, than they make it seem right. It, you think like, Oh yeah, I'll be able to put this anywhere. And yeah, you can put it on a tree or a pole or somewhere at the park, but in your own home, it's hard. I mean, you have to have the space around your door to fully use it. And, and if you don't, you're very limited. And so that's where the ISO flow comes in is where you don't need an anchor point. Like you are your own anchor point and you're still getting all of these other abilities to use the product. And so I think that's where ISO flow kind of stands apart is the ability to anchor up as a suspension trainer, offer the self resistance, and then also offer the, the anchor free, just use your own body as your own anchor. The one thing I just added somewhat of a follow-up, a little bit of an update, the more I play with this, because yes, once I had the T2 and the Isoflow, I'm like, the Isoflow just seems like a more simplistic device or strap system. And to be totally honest, this like rotational thing, 
I don't notice a huge difference. You'd think there would be between this and the uh, just the basic carabiner clip the IsoFlow is using. But what I will say is unique is that actually this thing actually feels a little bit easier. So if you don't want as much resistance or it's gonna get in too hot, this T2 trainer works pretty good. Uh, but this bungee system, I didn't really know what I was gonna use it for, but you guys will see it in a future video. I do end up using this bungee system. It is kind of a unique thing. It's just really, is it worth the upgrade? I'll also add that a big flaw in the T2 which I think gave the ISO flow a big benefit is the ISO flow also upgraded their like one of their side of their handles be more of a kind of flatter strap. You guys can check that out in my review, but the T2 ISO fusion, getting all these terms mixed up here, uh, had this plastic handle, which really I do not like, but the good thing is they do have an upgraded handle that you guys can check out. So for whatever it's worth, this thing might be going out of style or whatever, but you can still even stand it on it if you really wanted to, if like a foot harness. Now, Chrisman kind of alluded to this in the beginning, but I wanted to ask him kind of directly, you know, how does he address or how does he kind of feel various bulwarker haters? Because like many people, and I can definitely assume this and relate to it, if you just look at it, you're like, well, this just seems like a gimmick. It seems like something that was from the 60s. What can you really do with this? Uh, why not grab some dumbbells, barbells? I hear this all the time even with my sliding mesh trainers. Or why don't you use something like a resistance band? It's kind of like a modern day difference. And there are some unique uses of this tool. I will just say that, especially if you get into isometrics and start respecting isometrics, I do really like this thing. But I just wanted to hear Chrisman kind of field and address how he uh, kind of gets around these uh, bull worker haters, what, kind of, what some stuff he really more or less hears. I mean, first and foremost, we get them all the time. I mean, I think <laughs> that is our biggest um, hurdle is it's tough to demonstrate how effective it is until you get it in someone's hands. And so a lot of times, I mean, you're going to have trolls all over the internet, right? Regardless of the product. But a lot of times you'll see people that'll see it and they'll be like, oh yeah, what a joke, right? Or this thing again, or whatever it might be. And so a lot of times people, they just can't get over the fact that it's something new and different. And, and so if we can convince them to get it in their hand more often than not, we find that they're like, wow, similar to you, right? I mean, your kind of experience was like, oh yeah, that looks cool. I don't know what I do with it. And then you get it in your hand, you're like, okay, I see some application to this and same thing. So like you get it into someone's hands and they start to use it. They feel the pump, they feel the strength and, and even start seeing the results. And so I would say one of the limitations that we get a lot is because we, we, we find our niche is isometrics. A lot of times people will be like, oh, well, you're only strengthening that position. And science will tell you otherwise that you're not only strengthening that position. You're, when you're doing an isometric connection, contraction, you're actually hitting plus and minus 15 degrees on both ends of that, ang on that joint angle. And so that's why we see it as like, okay, there's two ways around that now. Because a lot of times people are like, oh, well, there's no range of motion. It's like, well, we get that with just the compression distance, there's not the full range of motion, but your body's capable of the full range of motion. And so if you break up an isometric contraction into thirds, now you're hitting that entire range of motion. So let's say if you wanted a chest compression, you could go here, and then you could do the side chest compression, and then you can do the side chest compression. And so now you did get that full range of motion you actually got a little bit more because again, gravity, like if I was doing a chest fly, you have your cables, which gives you a different idea too. But if I was doing a, a dumbbell chest fly, once I get to like here, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really getting out here or else I'm either lifting not enough weight to, for it to work when I'm up here, or I'm lifting too much weight and it's kind of jeopardizing the health of my shoulders. But then also when you're up here, the weight's coming down. It's not coming across the body, right? And so I think that's a big point of what a lot of people misconceive on, on our product is, oh, well, isometrics only hit that joint angle. And again, studies show that otherwise. But then that's when we also come in with our isomotion concept. So it's like, okay, maybe you don't want to break up your isometric holds into thirds. How about doing a contraction, holding the contraction and then moving through your natural range of motion. And again, now you're, you're, you're really starting to feel that pump, that time under tension is never letting up. Though what you'll notice, similar if you were to like grab a, a 50 pound dumbbell or 100 or whatever you wanna grab, when you're up here, it's really easy. But as you start to move that dumbbell away from your body, it gets heavier and heavier, or so it feels, right? And that's one thing that's nice about the bull worker is it's immediate response to your kind of optimum, your optimum resistance. So 
when you're in tight, you can really crank on it and then keeping that held. And as you move out, you'll notice you'll start to release a little bit, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Your muscles are still fully engaged. It's just kind of maximizing the effectiveness there. So I, I would say those are the two misconceptions of bull worker. And then those are kind of our answers to the people that are willing to give it a try or listen is just either a divided into three, three joint angles or B give isomotion a go. Cause it's, it's isomotion is pretty powerful. And then kind of in wrapping up, I still just kind of asking him more questions that I really edited this down for the sake of the video, how I was personally using it and where I think this thing particularly shines and just my own little humble opinion here. Like I've already said, I use it a lot in my living room. I use it and I kept asking him about things like farmer strength. Cause I feel like if I was doing these activities, uh, if I'm sitting there watching TV, if you want like a break, like you're kind of tired and you grab work on your computer in your office and you just grab this thing and start doing some reps, you naturally kind of just wake up a little bit, you get a little more rejuvenated. And I think it's actually kind of addicting where I can just get, I don't know if it's just like ADD or what, I can just get addicted and just start doing some reps in a variety of things. So is that a good thing? Is it too much? Is it too much of a good thing? Is it kind of overtraining if I'm already doing a workout and using this? So wanted to hear his thoughts about further using this thing for almost like micro level workouts, developing things like farmer strength. And he gets into also the benefits of using this for like tendon and ligament strength. Absolutely. You nailed it, Mike. I think, let's see if I can remember all three of those. So on the farmer strength, I agree. Like that is isometrics in a lot of ways, right? Is farmer strength is they're holding these weird positions and holding a certain bag of grain or working on a tractor or whatever it might be. And they're just cranking in these weird positions, constantly time under tension. And that's why a lot of times like you shake their hand or whatever. And you notice like, wow, these people are strong. And that's similar to bull worker. Like you, you build this isometric strength that, that is really applicable in your daily life. And so the second thing that you were talking about and we we're okay with that. And it kind of goes back to practicality and availability. So we are a standalone product. And if someone doesn't have access to the tools that you have access to, they don't have access to a gym. They don't want to pay to go to the gym, whatever it might be, then certainly grab the bull worker and use it in a traditional gym way. And you'll still have a very a highly effective routine that'll, that will deliver. But if you're someone who's like, Hey, I like going to the gym. I like lifting weights. I like using other products. I like doing these things. Then we're okay with that too. And we say, okay, well, here's where we can complement your routine. And that's kind of what you were getting at is like, okay, we get that, that if you were in the gym and you, you have access to a dumbbell, you'd rather do a shoulder press than a shoulder press on the bull worker. But where the bull worker comes in handy is when you're on vacation, when you're on days where you can't get to the gym, or in a complementary way to the gym as well as the isometric aspects is going to strengthen the connective tissue. So it's going to increase your strength, which will help you push through those plateaus. And then it'll also strengthen the connective tissue to help reduce the risk of injury. Because a lot of times what happens with isometrics are very effective at the, the connective tissue strengthening because connective tissue tendons and ligaments take a little more time to get engaged and build the strength than a muscle does. So a lot of times when you're doing like a traditional weightlifting thing, your muscle builds and strengthens a lot faster than the tendons and ligaments do. And that's why you see kind of newcomers that come to the gym and they're, they really get, they blow up, they're getting big. And then a lot of times they get hurt. And the reason why is because their connective tissue hasn't caught up, hasn't caught up with their muscle strength. So that's how we would see the bull worker routines kind of complementing someone who is kind of in their system and they like it, then it's like, okay, leverage the isometric aspect of it to, to build the strength and push through plateaus, reduce risk of injury, or do it on the complementary things like where, where you're on, where you can't get to it, you're on vacation. And then the last bit we would say is pick it up, squeeze it and roll through that isomotion, right? And that will bring a whole different pump to your routine. We have, we have a lot of weightlifters that use it in between. So like, let's say they'll do a bench press and then they'll grab the bull worker and they'll just pump out with the bull worker, right? That's a great way to do it. And then, um, the, like you said, the, that was the third thing we have created some office routines where every 30 minutes studies show every 30 minutes, if you take a break, you actually increase your productivity. So we have a seven second isometric hold every 30 minutes. And by the end of your day, now you just hit 
anywhere from 16 to 20 hours or 16 to 20 different exercises. That's a pretty thorough workout, right? And you're not, you're not breaking a sweat. You don't have to go to the gym and, and, and shower and transport and everything. It's just throughout your day, increasing your productivity. And then finally, I just wanted to hear Chrisman kind of give his own kind of elevator pitch to people that are maybe apprehensive, thinking about trying this out, who could use it, who could benefit from it. Uh, you already kind of heard him talk about how it can be a great compliment to other things. That's certainly what I'm finding. Uh, but basically, how would he sell us to someone like you guys who may have never seen this thing before or thinking about picking it up? Fitness for your lifestyle right? And that not only means the results that you're looking for, but a fitness program that fits into your lifestyle. And again, going back to that practicality. And if you're someone who is very happy with what you're doing, then I think you would, you would benefit from the bull worker to add that kind of connective tissue and, and isometric aspect to it. But if you're someone who's like, Hey, you know what? I really can't stick to a program. I can't figure out what I want to do for fitness. Then I think that's where where bull worker really comes in and say, and and you would say hey pick it up the first week program would be literally only seven exercises seven seconds not much time at all not much commitment and then the ability to really grow into it um, from from a five minute workout to an hour long workout whatever you, whatever kind of suits your fitness goals and then the last piece would be I mean we we stand behind our product we we stand behind it with a ninety day money back guarantee we. Our goal is not to sell a bunch of these things and have them sitting around, right? Like, I believe like one one of our main values is integrity, and and our integrity is is we believe that creating a, a value and a good for society, the profits will come, right? Not the other way around. That if you're strictly focused on profit, that's when you start to cut corners and you start to rip people off and you start to just trying to push a sale, and so. We, we would be the first to admit that we're not for everyone. We understand that, but we, you have nothing to lose. And if, if you give us a try, we, we think you'll be, you'll be pleasantly surprised. That is it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Extreme thanks to Chrisman who has been more than generous, reaching out to me, talking to me, answering questions, fielding questions. He's open to doing more things. We possibly talked about doing a Bullworker Challenge, which I'm still open to kind of doing. My problem right now is I got too many cool things I've been playing with. Uh, so it'd be hard to kind of stick to one thing, but certainly been using this thing a lot. Like I said, more so off the machine or off workouts, doing stuff just in the home, just kind of in the office. But if you guys got any questions about this, you guys have your feedback on how to use Bullworker, take advantage of it. Definitely let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video.